darlings. And now, it's time for your favorite part of the show, our Stacking Benjamins Headlines. In our headline today, uh, a lot of news lately, OG, about a gentleman named Peter Thiel and how he mastered his Roth IRA to get $5 billion tax-free. It's a lot of scratch. But, yeah, I know. You can't live on it, but it's a nice start. Their website, ProPublica, recently reported billionaire Peter Thiel's Roth IRA with value more than $5 billion. That has leaders in Congress up in arms and talking about passing laws that could affect your IRA. Website says it obtained IRS data on taxpayers' filed returns, though it didn't disclose how the information was obtained. But ProPublica says its claims about Thiel's IRA are accurate. Here's what happened, OG. As an early investor in PayPal, Thiel acquired shares at a low cost, perhaps for pennies a share. He had his Roth IRA purchase some of those shares. Since PayPal is a successful company, the value of the shares grew and now are worth substantially more than Thiel's Roth IRA paid for them. I called up our friend Ed Slot and asked Ed what he thought about uh, Peter Thiel and the Roth IRA, and here was his thought. I see is Peter Thiel's you know, multi-billion dollar Roth IRA and how you can do it too. So let's just get to the point. You won't do that. That's like saying, you know, uh, I won a hundred million in a lottery and you can too. You know, it's unlikely it's going to happen to you, but it does bring out the point that whatever grows in your Roth IRA grows income tax free for the rest of your life. So he not only has 5 billion or whatever it is, uh, maybe it's 6 billion by today. <laughs> uh, in his Roth IRA, but it's all growing tax-free. But if it makes you feel better that he's got all this money, he's not keeping a lot of that. So even though it's all tax-free, that's income tax. It will still be subject to a state tax, although I understand I just read something that maybe he li he uh, has citizenship in New Zealand or something. But again, that's not likely going to be you. So even though it's free of income tax, it's not free of a state tax, which could consume a good chunk of that. And all he did is follow the, the rules. I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. I don't know why everybody's saying, oh, he did these terrible things. Yeah. No, he invested $1,700 of his $2,000 that he had in a Roth IRA in 1999, which is perfectly legal. He bought this startup stock, the PayPal, for one-tenth of one cent per share. <laughs> So he bought 1.7 million shares for 1700 And you know what? If he lost his money, we wouldn't even be talking about that since nobody would care. So it does bring up the point that, you know, if you have something that you think will highly appreciate, you want it in your Roth IRA because the upside is unlimited. You nod your head as we listen to Ed OG. I think you agree. And not only do I agree, but I'm also jealous. It does illustrate the impact because it might not be five billion, but I bet you you can get your Roth IRA to a million, and I bet you can get it to two million, and I bet it will be a fraction of your contributions that do it because the power of compounding, which Peter Thiel's Roth illustrates, has just compounded a lot faster, and the power of having that money tax free forever is on full display here. So if this didn't motivate you to start your Roth, I, I don't know what else would. Hey, uh, uh, you know, when people do think about getting rich inside their Roth though, right now, especially, I know there's gotta be a bunch of stackers out there going, what if I put crypto in my Roth, right? What if I hit it big with crypto? Mm -hmm. I also asked Ed about crypto in the Roth. If I'm going to venture into the crypto waters, should I be putting that money in my Roth IRA, hoping that it's going to no, grow you big can't time? Put it, that's why people get mixed up. You can't put it uh, in your Roth IRA. The Roth IRA has to have funds in there that you contributed. The only contributions you can make to a Roth, like Peter Thiel did, is in cash. Uh, from you know, you work, you you have to be qualified to have a Roth by having earnings. And now, unlike uh, Peter Thiel's 2000 you can put up to 6000 in a Roth IRA or 7000 if you're 50 or over. And then once that cash is in the Roth IRA, you're pretty much free to invest in anything you want except certain collectibles and life insurance. So if you wanted to get into cryptocurrency and you think there's going to be a big upside – that's where you want your money. You can be like a mini Peter Thiel, maybe. If you make <laughs> a lot of money, at least it all grows tax-free. But 
Remember, not everybody makes a fortune. It's very volatile. People can be vulnerable to hacking and all kinds of things that are happening. It's unregulated. You really have to know what you're doing. We're only hearing about the ones that made all this money, the people putting out the TikTok videos. But for everybody that makes money, this is how a market works. Somebody has to lose money. That's the same thing with any stock. You think you're getting a deal when you buy a stock. Somebody's betting exactly the opposite when they sell it. So there is a market like that. And as they release more of these different types of coins, uh, it will probably stale, stabilize and you won't see this high volatility over time. But if you think you want to get your feet wet in it and use some of your uh, money and your Roth to do it, it's not a bad idea. Uh, but I wouldn't overly do it because of the high risk and you could lose your money. Yeah, great advice. So it starts off as cash and then have uh, an account inside of the Roth where you can convert that cash into Bitcoin or whatever it might be after it's and, inside the shelter. Yeah, but you'd probably need a self-directed IRA custodian. Yeah. Uh, if you go to Fidelity or Vanguard or Schwab or any of the big names and you say, I want to invest in Bitcoin or Dogecoin or whatever it is, they'll tell you to get lost. <laughs> You'd need to go out to a self-directed IRA custodian, and you can find them online, but there's fees for that. Yeah. So you have to go kind of outside the traditional investing world to do it. Ed, I would guess if people want better tax planning help, you might know of a place where people can get that. Right. You go to our website. There's a lot of resources and article. We have articles galore on the whole Peter Thiel thing, the Bitcoin and everything. And all of that information is pretty much it is free. It's not pretty much. It's free. Right. <laughs> you just go on the site. We we load it up. I, I'm always hesitant because I'm saying, do we charge for any of it? No, I don't think we do. <laughs> and it's IRAhelp.com, I-R-A-H-E-L-P.com. You'll learn a lot from the experts that post articles. That's our team of IRA experts, some of the best in the country. And that's what's good about it. Remember, we, we're tax advisors. We don't sell stocks, bonds, funds, insurance, annuities, none of that. So you can rely on that independent, objective, unbiased advice. And that's probably the best place to get it. Ed, thanks for nerding out with us for a few minutes about taxes, the Roth, and crypto today. I really appreciate your time, man. Okay. I wish billions in everybody's Roth IRAs. Sounds much more like gambling with your Roth IRA money if you go with crypto, but I like that. It can be done. I'm scared about self-directed IRAs for lots of reasons. The complexity, the the opportunity to have one one little foul up. You know, we hear about self-directed IRAs mainly on the real estate space where people are like, oh, I just put this in my IRA. And um, I've heard far many, far more stories of people screwing that up and getting a tax bill from the government for $200,000 than success stories. So you got to be careful. But I think like what, what Ed said there was really important, which was anytime you have an opportunity to make tons of money in something, if you can get it into a tax shelter of some kind, it's going to be better. Yeah. Uh, but don't go YOLO your way to Roth IRA oh, success. Oh, YOLO. I'm going to bet it all. The other thing that I kind of want to point out here about this Roth IRA thing is when Peter did this, it was in the early 2000s, I think, right? Early 2000, 2000 sure. something, yeah. late 90s maybe. Did he have any idea what the tax rates were going to be in the future? Did he know no, what tax no rate, clue. you know, I've, uh, oh, but what about the tax deduction today? What it? And look where he sits today with a bucket of tax-free money. And guess what he doesn't care about? The freaking tax rates. And you don't get to pick. And that's we get those questions a lot, both in, the, in our business, but then also here on the show, where it's like, well, should I put money in my pre-tax 401k or my Roth? I don't know. Yes, both. Well, which one's going to be better? Who knows? <laughs> because we don't know what tax rates are going to be in the future. But... I bet you that Peter's pretty excited that he's got $5 million tax-free money in his Roth right now. Doesn't really care that he didn't get the deduction. So do the Roth people.